on the verge of starting my freshman year at Columbia, uh, summer 1988, pre-internet, I get a letter in the mail, and it's a thin envelope from Columbia, and it's announcing who my freshman roommate is. And I open it up, and I see Andy Hyman, Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey, and I think, wait, I know this guy. I went to high school with this guy. Did I request him? No. Did he request me? No. We knew each other, and we were cordial, but we weren't friends. We were in different circles. And I thought, what are the odds with the size of that class, then maybe 750, 800 people, that my freshman roommate would be someone I knew in high school? So I called him up and we laughed about it. And we said, oh, you know, looking forward to seeing you. And, you know, he seemed pretty open-minded about it, as was I. I heard all kinds of stories about the dangers of not getting along with your freshman roommate. So we both had significant incentive to make it work. We had never had a problem in high school. And he was a very outgoing, cool, social, friendly, energetic kid. And, and admittedly, I was much quieter, shyer, more introverted. And I had friends in school, but I was more to myself. And my first thought was, uh, you know, he, he's definitely a different personality. I wonder how this is going to go. So that was certainly a, a, an initial concern, but a concern that ended up being unfounded. We lived together the first year. It was in Carmen, uh, fourth floor of Carmen, and um, it was two suites of two people. Uh, the other suite were two engineers from Long Island, uh, nice guys, and Andy and I were in another suite. We had a shared bathroom. We were right outside the lounge on the fourth floor of Carmen. And it just so happened that a significant number of freshman football players lived on our floor. So the lounge right outside our door tended to get a little rowdy. On rare occasions, I learned uh, tremendous skills of diplomacy on how to tell a very large individual to stop making so much noise because I had an English paper due the next day or an exam. I think that was actually the driver as to why I almost never studied in my room. The noise wasn't that bad, but Columbia has numerous libraries. The college library was, and perhaps still is, a real social scene. But a lot of the graduate libraries were tremendous places to study, lots of nooks and crannies. You know, uh, the architecture library in Avery uh, was a neat visual location. The law library had private carols. Uh, East Campus had all kinds of areas you could hang out and hide and, and, and work your way into, or international affairs, I should say. And uh, I ended up studying a lot in libraries, in part because I had a roommate, I had a very busy lounge right outside my door, and I was used to quiet. I came from a quiet academic family, and it was a pretty quiet household. So suddenly you're in this environment with dozens and dozens of other people around you who may be loud or may not care that you have a test or a quiz the next day or that's just the way they are. And, and I think you really learned a lot about how to get along with people different than yourself uh, you know, in terms of personality, in terms of upbringing, in terms of religion, in terms of political views, in terms of uh, you know, etiquette. Uh, you, know, you really have to learn very quickly. Uh, Columbia is an extremely diverse place but it's also diverse in terms of how people act and behave and handle the rigors of college. So I think it's a tremendous learning experience.